asked him on what grounds he said eden gardens <laughs> and trust me harbhajan singh has done more for tourism in australia <laughs> than what tourism australia can ever do in their lives <laughs> so if you ever have a padma vibhushan australia ratna order of australia this is the man who deserves it round of applause ladies and gentlemen for harbhajan singh but the partnership today is between dream set go icc travel and tours and ao travel one of the most amazing thing is yes the t20 world cup but australia you go and not watch uh, you know the australian open is something that you can't even imagine and rod laver arena and the mcg is just just opposite each other so you'll get the opportunity of actually having fun with this wonderful partnership so these two unique bodies are extremely passionate about offering some of the most unforgettable sports experiences who have decided to come together for the greater good of people like us that is the cricket and tennis fan die hard fans like you and me so who does this and that organization is dream set go who's getting people like us to go to these wonderful places 20 cricket world cup and next year's australian open 2023 i hope uh, jokovic will be vaccinated by then <laughs> we'll make sure we do something like that but yes take a look at how the partners are going to make this all exciting for all of us important because he puts me on the plane to australia but let me first call on stage the two founders and i am extremely jealous of them because they get to actually arrange all of this something that i always wanted to do when i left my job and said i'd build this fan company i'll take insights out of the fan and then build this great organization ladies and gentlemen while i was talking they built a 8 billion dollar organization with 140 million viewers 0.1% is okay for me <laughs> doesn't matter ladies and gentlemen first let me call on stage the ceo and um, co-founder of dream sports somebody who's a fan himself and i really believe that his fan insight is what made him start this wonderful company he believes in innovation i've had multiple chats with him on why every level you should be innovating and most importantly one of the best things about dream sports is that for a young company like them they have an amazing culture which takes data users transparency performance and ownership as one of their pillars for their culture ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for harsh jain if you go to dream sports there's this guy who will just be standing you don't know he's worth billions of dollars but he'll stand there he's somebody who you know has probably taken sports data and fan cumulatively to the next level somebody who will just go around the corner and create a great product he's also the co-founder of uh, dream sports put your hands together for bhavit chet Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most important people here, <laughs> because he is going to help us go to Australia to watch this wonderful, uh, you know, extravaganza of T20 cricket as well as Australian Open. Put your hands together for founder and CEO, Dream Set Go, Monisha. That was supposed to be my scene. <laughs> So we are going to start chatting with uh, these wonderful people who created this great enterprise, and now Dream Set Go as a vertical of this enterprise. And start with you, Harsh. Uh, is I know the answer, but still, from your perspective, what drove you to make this amazing company, Dream Sports? Uh, yeah, so I'm very excited to be here. <clears throat> I think we started Dream Eleven back in 2008. and that was mainly to solve for fantasy cricket and you know bhavit and i are a huge fantasy football fanatics for fantasy premier league and when ipl started in india in 2008 we went looking for fantasy cricket and it just didn't exist and super selector if anyone remember super selector back in the day we went looking for super selector and it had shut down so wrong product uh, right product wrong time and we just didn't think about it and we just started out on that journey fast forward 2018 about 10 years later 
we had uh, fallen, gotten beaten up, got up and figured out some way to make the business work and turned it into a billion dollar company. And we had about 100 million users. And we said, okay, what else can we do for our sports fans, right? This is coming purely from a passion. And we said, one of the main things we definitely want is for sports fans to be able to watch their favorite sports matches in a way that they can trust the platform. They can trust that the ticket is that's not fake. The tickets that I've got are real. The seats that I'll get, there won't be that. You remember, Vikram, you, you're talking about it. Sometimes you used to buy a ticket and there used to be a pillar in front of you <laughs> in the stadium. It was a big deal. You should have to look like that at the match. And so you should be able to trust the person that's giving you the tickets, that it's real, that the seats are good. And not just that, I think sports matches, viewing them and watching them is about the whole experience. It's not just about going for the match. And that was a real problem. So I think that's what led us to want to start a sports travel and experiences, not just travel, but experiences vertical, along with the rest of Dream Sports products and services, which I won't bore you with, that we've started along with that. Truly fantastic. Bhavit, taking from Dream Sports with the vision that you talked about, what is your take on this? Yeah, so I'll say, you know, in 2008, uh, when Harsh pitched this idea, you know, we are a group of friends um, having Shisha at one place. And Harsh was like... I you're allowed to say that, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Harsh was like, let's do this. And um, I was probably the only dumb person to say, chalo, let's do it, yeah, it's an amazing idea. And uh, from there, you know, we started off and uh, the, you know, the reason we've kept persisting with because, as I said, we've fallen down, we've uh, got beaten up across, you know, all these years. But the reason we kept continuing was because of our passion for sports and uh, the passion for fantasy sports as well. And uh, so that's what got us from how, where we started to where we are today. And uh, I'll just tell you the real story behind Dream Set Go, which Harsh doesn't say. It's, <laughs> it's because um, Harsh had once gone to watch a Manchester United match, I think, 10 years ago. And um, he bought these amazing tickets. He thought he had bought these amazing tickets. So in his Manchester United gear, all his fan gear, he went to the stadium. He entered the stadium and realized he got tickets for the Arsenal away stand. And, and he was the only guy in the Manchester United uh, gear in an Arsenal away stand. <laughs> and that day, he promised to himself that, boss, I'm going to start a company which makes sure that people don't get stuck like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's like a really bad situation to be. <laughs> but, you know, it, by the way, I had this idea 30 years back. But the, as Einstein said, the difference between idea and a good idea is the execution. And Dream Set Go happened through one of your prob me probably meetings like this, that what is the logical extension of all this, right? At the end of the day, people want to see match, see Sachin, see Virat, see Vivias, see Bhaji. And that is that last plug that you have to fill. And I'm assuming that Dream Set Go was, you know, uh, an idea that came out of this thought. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, in fact, right now, fast forward, 10 years from that Manchester United experience is all I'll say. Is that uh, I told Munish, now you've started this dream set going all now. Please can we go for a Manchester United match, which we can actually enjoy. So Bhavit and I actually this Monday, <coughs> this week, went to watch Manchester United Brentford. Because that may be the last time Ronaldo plays for Manchester United. This time, we went to a lounge, <coughs> which where we could meet Manchester United legends before the game sit with them, eat with them, hear about their version of the game, then go outside, get great seats, and watch the entire match, and then have a pre-match and post-match place to go. And that is the experience you actually enjoy, right? And so this is what, you know, yes, you go to see Bhaji, you go to see VVS, but if you can also hear from people like them about how they see the match, that is a real experience. Because they will be exactly, you know, they'll be able to tell you that 156 by Umran Malik is 156. <laughs> Not for people like us. Kya yaar, eh, bah, ye main haam bhi dalte, tennis ball cricket mein. Fans have the best way. They know everything except for the cricketers. <laughs> 
But you know, what is clearly visible, Munish, is that they are your biggest clients, yeah? They are taking all your… Uh, <laughs> Our biggest, his biggest billing is from me, I think, till now. <laughs> but uh, that brings uh, Munish into the picture. Uh, why did you choose, as your coach, as you would call it, Munish? So I think, like I said, uh, the one thing we've learned, at least, you know, we've seen experience from entrepreneurship, is that there is no successful entrepreneur that hasn't failed many, many times before that. And I think <clears throat> the one thing that we don't treasure in India enough, that only you have to go through to treasure, is failed entrepreneurship. And I think I, I, I tell Munish you should wear it with a badge of honor. Munish was super passionate, so passionate about travel that he actually left a really great job to jump into travel blindly and run a travel startup for five years. And then on top of that, there was his undying love for Chelsea, which you'll have to forgive, he doesn't understand football that much. <laughs> but uh, his undying love for Chelsea, which is a, was honestly the perfect combination when we were looking for someone to lead a sports travel and experiences vertical for us, what better than an entrepreneur that's committed five years of his life given up a paycheck and just stuck to his guns, running this through and through and being a crazy sports fan. So I think that's the best combination for us. Bhavit, your thoughts? You know, uh, and this is probably, this deserves a round of applause because we as a country never celebrate failure. And Silicon Valley actually hires entrepreneurs who have failed in their first startups in big companies because they know they understand business better than many people. And I think this is something that Michael Jordan summed up beautifully well. He was asked, why did you become so successful? Because he said that I failed a lot of times. And that principle, it's good that you took that people who have understood the journey and to hire Monish for that is absolutely amazing. Your thoughts on that, Bhavi? Yeah, so Monish has asked me to be nice to him. So I'm going to filter out my answer a little bit. <laughs> but, um, you know, the same thing I said earlier, the reason I believe we were able to build Dream Sports also was because of our passion for sports and for uh, fantasy sports, right? And in a similar light, what we saw in Monish was also that passion for sports and travel. And uh, obviously, as I said, the fact that he had that stint with entrepreneurship and he learned what not to do almost, right? And uh, so all of those factors combined, we thought that it would make a great, uh, you know, combination to run this uh, entire Dream Set Go uh, platform for us. That is amazing. Now let's uh, come to you, Monish. Uh heading and founding and, you know, running this company. Tell us your vision of how you want to take this company further and how you see the future. Thanks. Actually, I want to take a step back and uh, talk about our culture because that's something that you mentioned. And uh, you also very kindly call me a coach, right? So, uh, so actually, throughout Dream Sports, right? And that's kind of embodied into every single brand which is under Dream Sports and, and that's applied to Dream Set Go as well. Uh, we look at we don't call our office the office, we call it the stadium. Uh, we look at our entire team as if it's a sports uh, team, right? And, and up top, the founder or the CEO is, is the individual who's the coach, who's getting everything together. And your top management guys are your captains, right? And then we give them the freedom as a captain to build a strong team to outperform, right? So if you apply sports into the corporate world and you actually build that spirit around it, then you, you will never go wrong, right? So uh, so thank you for calling me a coach there because, uh, you know, that's how we look at it uh, every day when I get into work at DreamSet Go. We're looking at how we're going to approach this uh, like a sportsman. Uh, and second, in terms of like what you said, in terms of what is the vision for DreamSet Go, uh, the idea is, is very, very simple, right? Uh, if I have to actually give my own example, uh, I never had access to the best tickets, right? And you mentioned that as well. Uh, Bhavit mentioned that about Harsh's experience. Uh, so it's a combination of two things. I'll give two examples actually. Uh, one is in terms of having a holistic experience where it's not only about watching the game live, uh, but also having like uh, a great experience, you know. There's hospitality, uh, there's the best seats, there is food and beverages before and after the game. Uh, and in addition to that, it's about do you have access to meet the first team? You know, do you watch them train? Uh, can you get... Uh, a fireside chat with a top legend, understand their stories, right? And it just elevates your entire experience when it comes to sports. Uh, you know, we were chatting yesterday and I told you that uh, 
life is all about those 10 20 amazing moments that you have right and and that sums up your entire life but as a sports fan if we can give you that one amazing moment and etch that into your memory then that's something that i think that our purpose has been done right so minimum one hopefully we can give a lot more so yeah for me that moment was uh and, and, I, and I like this analogy because, you know, if you talk about your life, you'll say that Main, I was there. Yeah. And that I was there factor is what defines us. Like I was there when Bhaji got the first Indian to get a hat-trick against Australia in Kolkata. I was there. You didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is that moment we all look for and Dream Set Go is giving it to us. So thank you, gentlemen. Your final thoughts uh, on uh, uh, the road ahead. Well, I, I just think that um, this T20 World Cup is going to be very exciting. I think India didn't have such a great World Cup last time around. And the boys uh, must be rearing to go out and grab it. I think that what better place than Australia to kind of imprint that how good this team is. Um, it's people like VVS and Bhaji that have put this fighting culture back into the team and how we've you know grown from that entire generation with Dada and that entire group changed Indian cricket, right? And got that spirit of fighting and not taking it, you know. And that's what I'm dying to see with uh, Dream Set Go this October, November. So yeah, that, that's it. I can't wait to have matches where I'm not sitting in the away section dressed in home gear. And I can't wait to have access to your people like Bhaji and VVS and hear their life stories and how they see the matches and have experiences that define, like Moni said, moments of our life that we'll never forget. Thank you so much, Harsh. Thank you so much, Bhavit. 0.1% for you and lifetime access, all access. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. A round of applause for Harsh Jain and uh, Bhavit Shet. like to request you to uh, please take your seats. a dear friend, somebody who is also a cricketer, plays cricket very regularly. He's been with Tourism Australia for more than a decade, if I'm not mistaken. He's promised me, there are 65 wine regions in Australia. He's promised me all access pass to all the regions. And this is a commitment in front of the media. So you have no option. Put your hands together for country manager, Tourism Australia, Nishan Kashikar. Ladies and gentlemen, cricket is not only about the sport you play, it's about the mind. And I believe that after uh, speaking to a lot of uh, cricketers from this generation, not only was this man a comedian, he was a counsellor, he was everything to the Indian dressing room. Not only that, he's got some 700 odd wickets as well, 400 plus test match wickets. That hat-trick was one of the finest hat-tricks we saw against Australia in Kolkata. Put your hands together for now a politician as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Harbhajan Singh! Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, there are so many tours from 2003, 2007, 2011. There were a bunch of people in Australia who would just come to watch this man bat. It was amazing because all of them just wanted to see uh, their bowlers being beaten by VVS Lakshman. They say, we want Lakshman to play. Australia should win the match. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for somebody who we've always adored, an absolutely fantastic human being, VVS Lakshman! Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having an interesting conversation with him. With this guy around, I don't see my job. <laughs> but first, I'd like to ask you, Bhaji. Australia and you have a great connection. And I've said it in the beginning. This is your time to ask Tourism Australia to give you a badge of honor. You've been sp your Australia has been a special country for you. What do you have to say? I think <laughs> <laughs> he needs to answer. Australia is missing me. Every, the whole world misses you. The whole world missing me. Now, Australia is a great place to be. I've enjoyed each and every moment there. Apart from that Sydney moment, but that was also fine. It's a part that of, gave me a lot of recognition. Every day I was on the papers. I was like a Michael Jackson there. <laughs> every day. 
three, four cameras, they were following me. Whether a good reason or bad reason, everything is good. So yeah, Australia is a fun place. I don't know if they are missing me or not. You guys are good mates now, by the way. Sorry? You guys are good mates now, I've heard. Very good, very good mates. Not just mates, very good mates. Me and Andrew Simon, we are very good mates. <laughs> And because of him, uh, Nishant, you, your targets were achieved. After 2007, I know you'll tell me the numbers, but Indians visiting Australia doubled, tripled four times. Absolutely. I guess these cricketers have played a phenomenal role without even paying them. They have been great <laughs> ambassadors and advocates for tourism in Australia. Kar di. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Baji, I'll start with you. Uh, Dream Set Go, you've been part of Dream Set Go in the past, and uh, uh, this partnership is going to help fans like us to actually witness those, you know, luckily I was there in 2007 as well, but so many people will get a chance because of this partnership. What are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, congratulations, Harsh and your partner and everyone, you know, who are part of this team. And I'm also being part of this team for uh, many years now. And this is a great kind of a platform, you know, uh, where you get to see the match and of course, great tickets, great seats, and of course, a lot of uh, great places to see around the world. This is just a starting uh, with Australia, but I'm sure wherever um, World Cup or FIFA or anything happens, Harsh will be there. And uh, of course, I know where to contact for the tickets, <laughs> uh, definitely. So it's a great uh, kind of a setup. You know, um, I can tell you a small little story. When we played the final against uh, Sri Lanka in, in Mumbai, I had to buy those tickets. You know, even those tickets were, you know, as bad as you got those <laughs> tickets. You know, I have spent a lot of money, but still I didn't get the best of the tickets. But, but with Dream Set Go, with this platform, you know, you can be sure, you know, what you're there offering. You'll be comfortably watching the game and also sitting in the proper places and also get to see a lot of good places around the world. No, oh, it's amazing that he says that because normally people think, right, that ki players have a lot of tickets. Hote. Nahin, nahin hote. But that's the problem. Players have a lot of tickets. Nahin hote. Nahin hote. <laughs> and I believe Virinda Sehwag once had a, during the World Cup, he had a meeting that he said, if you have 2 or 4, then I will not play. It can happen. Viru can do anything. <laughs> Viru will get to meet, then he will play a match. No, Viru will say, no, I will not play a match. But uh, there was another story, I'll tell you. Shoy Bakhtar asked me once for tickets. You know, India-Pakistan game semi-final in Mohali. And he called me, yaar, mere ghar wale aare, yaar, kuch kar de. Tere to ghar pe match hai. So I said, chalo, theek hai, maine paanch ticket organize kiye. Achche tickets. Kata, yaar, paanch final ki bhi kar de na. Mai ke, bhai, final ki tum loog kya karo ge? Malab, confidence dekho. Or agle din banda wo match bhi nahi khela. <laughs> तो मैंने पकड़ा मैंने कहा मेरी टिकटें वापस दे कहता यार मैं नहीं खेलता मेरे घर वाले तो आए हैं ना यार <laughs> पर मैंने उसको मैच के बाद बोला मैंने कहा डेफिनेटली फाइनल की पांच तो अब तो नहीं चाहिए उन्हें कहता नहीं अब नहीं चाहिए <laughs> that was amazing but it happened to i mean it can happen to a cricketer even for somebody who's not like any important person in cricket one day one person called me uh, in england and said that yaar mere ko kal ke lords ke ticket dilwa de and there was like crazy stuff there was no tickets finally wo din pa char bar phone kar maine bola bhai tere ko 11 mein khilwa dunga ticket nahi hai ticket nahi hai mere paas nishan for you it's a interesting you know phase right this whole partnership you're looking at uh, australia as a destination and then this partnership happens as australian open t20 world cup how do you view this partnership I guess this is the best thing that has happened. Uh, first and foremost, like a big thank you to Monish and his entire incredible team at Dream Set Go for, for this opportunity of sharing this dais with two Padma Shris. I would have never imagined I would get this opportunity ever in my life. So thank you, Monish, for this, uh, for this honor. It's, it's I know Padma honor. Lakshmi, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> but it, this is one of the finest partnerships because uh, over the past couple of months, we've been working very closely with this entire team just to embellish the entire itineraries and the program that we are chalking out for the ICC T20 World Cup and for the Australian Open. And I don't want to steal the thunder. You know, on the 23rd of October, uh, 2022, this year, when India plays Pakistan, I guess MCG is going to be as packed as this. You know, with people standing in the aisles and cheering for their favorite country, you know, which countries, uh, you know, they, they were all going to cheer for. But the kind of... Uh, experiences these guys are going to curate are like those money can't buy moments. These are those precious, perfect moments that you would never get to experience with anyone else. 
And for some, this could even be life-changing moments. Like today, meeting these owners of Dream Sports itself is like a moment and how they've created this whole $8 billion empire. They're like inspirational stories. And that's what's going to happen when you travel to Australia. Get an opportunity to meet legends like VVS and Budgie up close and personal. Meet the, the former, current and the emerging players from the Australian cricket team as well. Tennis players uh, from Australia, from India. So these are moments that money can't buy. And if you haven't booked your ticket yet for the ICC T20 World Cup or for the Australian Open, just, just contact Monish and his entire team. But that, for that, you'll require money, eh? <laughs> but VVS uh, partnerships and you has been like legendary, whether it was with Rahul, whether against Australia, pa partnerships with Sachin in Sydney and, and a whole lot of other partnerships you've had, even with Bhaji as well. Uh, what does this partnership mean to you? And when I'm asking you, I'm asking you from a cricketer's perspective because fans and cricketers always, there was this divide. But now it's coming closer and closer. I think uh, this partnership is a very important partnership, you know, just to tell uh, to everyone in this room, you know, I got an opportunity to meet Monish and his team recently in Lucknow. I attended one of the events and uh, they have the soul and the spirit of a passionate uh, sports lover. And that's, I think, the basis of uh, curating uh, various experiences uh, for a sports lover, you know, because if you don't have that passion, if you don't have that love, if you don't know what a fan requires when he goes and watches a sports event, then you actually don't treat it like an experience, you treat it like a business. But what I've realized with them, meeting with them, all of them are ardent sports fans, not only cricket fans, but ardent sports fans. You know, whether it's tennis, uh, whether it's motor racing, you know, whether it's cricket. And it's great that, you know, they started this uh, partnership with ICC and with uh, Tourism Australia with a very important marquee. Uh, tournament. We know that this uh, World Cup was supposed to be in 2020, but unfortunately it didn't happen because of COVID and so everyone is waiting. And I'm sure more than everyone, I think the Indian fans are waiting because uh, the last uh, World Cup didn't go well for us. Uh, and I was telling to Monish, you know, and his team that wherever India plays, we as uh, cricketers are blessed that it's never an away game for us. You know, it's, it's a sea of blue uh, wherever we play any, any part of the world against any team. Uh, and I think uh, with this kind of experiences, I think uh, the fans who will be touring Australia will not only enjoy watching the match on the ground, but one of my favorite countries uh, uh, in world cricket. And that's something as former cricketers we miss because uh, uh, as a cricketer, you get to play in the best grounds in the world, but also you embrace different cultures. You know? And for me, touring Australia in 1999-2000 was an eye-opener. Uh, not only as a cricketer, but uh, as someone who was young, uh, who embrace their culture, the fearless attitude and the sportsman spirit. Everyone talks about Australians being the best ledgers. Well, Budgie and Zach for me are the best ledgers as far as cricket is concerned. But uh, the sportsman spirit, the crowd they have. You know, the crowd there, like when I got my first 100 uh, in Sydney, it was the Prime Minister, John Howard, who actually came and congratulated me when I was signing some autographs and he said, young man, you made my day. And when I looked up, it was the Prime Minister of Australia. Where do we get to see that kind of, uh, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, love for an opposition player? So I believe that this partnership uh, will definitely be long-lasting because they've got the heart in the right place for the sports and sports lovers. So I just wish them lots of luck. Thank you. Amazing. And I'll tell you something about Australia. The Australian fan, I made the mistake of wearing an English cap at Sydney Cricket Ground. I mean, how I did it, I don't know. And I got sledged so much. But then I realized one trick in Australia when you travel. When you are in Melbourne, praise the Melbourne people but criticize the Sydney people. And do it vice versa. When you are in Sydney, criticize Melbourne and then you become friends with all people sitting next to you. So that's an insight out of Australia. Munish, what does this partnership mean for the fan as well as for the brand? Uh, I think I'm going to sum it up for both the partnerships. The, so we are the official travel agent for the T20 World Cup in Australia this year. And we are the official tour operator for the Australian Open in January next year. And uh, both these uh, partnerships basically allow fans to get premium experiences, right? For the T20 World Cup, if I have to talk about that, it's about uh, getting the best tickets in the stadium. Uh, but along with that, getting the best accommodation. So we've, me and my excellent team out here, have uh, gone ahead and, and uh, booked some of the best properties in Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Adelaide, uh, to ensure that our clients get 
an incredible experience, uh, not only on the ground, off the ground as well, but it goes beyond that, right? Uh, can we give them access to legends like this? You know, can there be a meet and greet? Can there be a yacht experience, a winery experience, along with top legends? And uh, go beyond that as well. Australia is an incredible country. Uh, I've been there a couple of times. Uh, and, you know, we would love to kind of combine all of that with the sports element to give our clients uh, one of those memories that they'll never forget, right? So, you know, whether it's the Yarra Valley in, uh, uh, in Melbourne or the Phillip Island, or whether it's Don, Brad Don Bradman's house and museum in uh, Sydney, it's, it's about combining the destination and sports together and topping it up with, with legend presence. I think you can never, never miss that. Absolutely. So here's a little bit of trivia on Australia, especially the Australian Open. The Australian Open has a very old connection with cricket. The very first Australian Open in 1905 was played on a cricket ground, which is today known as the Albert Reserve Tennis Center. Did you know that? Tennis ball cricket udar se hi Just imagine, it's almost a 117 year old institution that they have built and the number of fans that they get are second to none in the world. They got the highest number of viewers also watching the Australian Open in 2020. They had almost 812,000 people. Yeah, I, I, you know, actually I was just going to say the Australian Open holds the record for the highest attendance of any tennis tournament ever. It had a whopping number of 8,12,174 fans in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now you have Indians, it will be 8 lakh. Lower parel is enough. <laughs> You played tennis ball cricket before preparation for Australia, o uh, wet tennis balls? Yeah, usually when you play on uh, bouncy tracks like in Australia or South Africa, you either use the plastic ball or you use the wet tennis ball just to counter the bounce you're going to get there. But uh, just talking about Australian Open, you know, I was very fortunate in 2016. In fact, our good friend, Arsha Bogle, uh, I was part of the Star Sports broadcasting team covering the T20 and the One Day Series. Uh, and one of my good friend in Melbourne, uh, he owned a box. So on one of our free days, me and Arsha went there. We had, a, uh, we had the lovely opportunity to meet Vijim Amritraj, who uh, is a legend as far as uh, world tennis is concerned. We watched Djokovic versus uh, Federer, and that evening was probably one of the best evenings in my life. You know, wow. and Arsha was shocked to see Vivius Lakshman, who everyone thinks is very cool, calm, <laughs> composed, <laughs> behave like a kid, behave like a child, you know, and uh, unfortunately, Federer, my favorite uh, tennis player, he lost that match. But it was an amazing experience where uh, uh, 80 to 90 percent of the crowd were uh, cheering for Federer, even though Djokovic was playing well, and everyone respects Djokovic, the tennis player, but everyone loved Federer, the tennis player, and I was one among them. So that's the kind of experience I'm sure uh, Munish and his team will curate for the uh, sports lovers uh, and the cricket lovers uh, in the upcoming Australian Open and also the T20 World Cup. Absolutely, it was a grass court tournament which has now become the tournament it is and there's some amazing things about Australian Open. They, the ball kids, right, they come from various countries. They come from China, India and stuff like that. There's an amazing selection process and every time an Australian Open game happens, you have to restring your rackets. So apparently there's a trivia that 60 kilometers of string is used. So I know more than you. <laughs> so, uh, Vikram, you know, uh, until now I thought that the F1 experiences were like uh, the most high end, right, in terms of the paddock club, etc. And we've got uh, that for pretty much all the races. But the experiences that Australian Open is giving are out of the world. Like you've literally got seats on court to actually sit and witness the game as wow. Wow. close as you can, right? You can actually go uh, be on center court watch the players actually practice right before the game and, and get a photo opportunity with them before they take off. Or you can actually do a clinic before the gates open up on that actual day and get the same facilities and the same experiences that the players get from professional coaches uh, at the stadium itself, right? At Rod Lever Arena. So these are incredible experiences. Wow. On court means I can move Nadal's bottle. <laughs> Vikram, you mentioned about 156 kilometers an hour. This comes at almost 190 kilometers an hour, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. But when you ever, cricket was played under floodlights. It was played with colored clothes, with white ball, Kerry Packer, Channel 9, the Donald Duck falling every time you got out on a, on a duck, and the India Pakistan finals. Uh, which India won by eight wickets, and then Ravi Shastri driving the Audi on the hallowed turf of the MCG. It's still giving me goosebumps. You know, at that point, as a 10-year-old, 
you know, the thought was stored in my mind that at some point of time I'm going to travel to Australia and watch the game at the iconic MCG, SCG, and then when you saw the Ashes and the Border Gavaskar series and the Australian Open, you thought at some point of time I'm going to travel to that country to watch this game. And that's exactly what Dream Set Go is going to do, right? That aspiration or the dream to actual visitation, they bridge that gap. So this partnership, as I said, is really uh, valuable to us, and we really look forward to working with them closely, more so because these two events are going to help us to bounce back to pre-COVID levels at the soonest, and it wouldn't have happened at a better time. So thanks, Monish, for this opportunity again. Baji, you have fan experiences in Australia. You know, you know how fans are, and today, for the first time, we can actually say, and I'm very confident that we'll have full capacity in Australia. Tell us some, some of your off-field experiences in Australia. Off-field experience, uh, I'll also just want to get to that. Uh, you know, it was my dream also to go and see tennis game. And that too when uh, Gassi was playing. And I got to see him. You know, I was lucky enough to get the ticket because I was a cricketer. But now with, you know, Dream 11 organizing this, you know, everyone have a dream to see their players watching there. So this is just becoming possible. So, you know, the moment you, you hear that this tournament is happening, the ticket just goes. So we, even if you want to buy, you can't buy at any price. So this is a great sort of opportunity for people to just go out there and see their sports stars, meet them and, and talk to them and take a picture. And I, had, um, I also got the opportunity to get the, my Indian jersey signed by Roger Federer while I was playing in yeah Australia. Yeah so that jersey is... Um, uh, there with me. You know, where do you get these kind of opportunity? This was very rare, but now everybody will have this kind of opportunity with uh, Dream Set Go. You know, you go there and uh, everything is yours. Yes, now you come to what? Yeah, you said something uh, about your Australia journey and uh, you can ch take a story from off-field, on-field. On-field, I remember you had sledged Darren Lehman once. No, no, no. I, I didn't sledge anyone. <laughs> I didn't understand their language, <laughs> what they're saying. <laughs> so they didn't understand what I was saying. It's a big story. But off the field, I think um, it's a great place to be. You know, uh, Melbourne is fantastic. Sydney is amazing. And uh, nightlife is absolutely brilliant. Don't miss out on that. You know, don't Lakshman just... won't know. Uh, no, Lakshman won't know. Lakshman won't know. Take me and take me and take me. I will show you the right... Sydney, you come, you come with us. We'll show you the places. I'll, even I'll you didn't stay with BBS. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you some of the places even you didn't know. <laughs> to Anna. But Australia is a great place. I've got a lot of stories, but… Uh, well, not fun story, to bata do na, on field. On field. On field, ek bar, uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, we were playing in Bangalore. And um, the, this Darren Lehman was uh, fielding on short leg and Shane Vaughan was bowling to me and every time Shane Vaughan bowled and he was just saying something to me. Not Shane Vaughan but Darren Lehman. And I didn't understand what this guy was talking about. Are you pregnant by the way? <laughs> so, oh, Shane Vaughan has and he started laughing. He said, man, this is the best thing I've heard today. <laughs> after, after going for 100 odd runs, you know, Sachin smacked him, VVS smacked him, and he said, this, this made my day today. <laughs> VVS, any memories of Sydney? Yeah, on, on the field, definitely one of my best uh, and favorite grounds, you know, uh, away from India. But I think the New Year celebration, you know, uh, but you also will vouch. Uh, Whenever we are there, you know, from 1999, 2000, so 2000 New Year, 2004 New Year, 7 and 2011, you know, 12, 12 New Year. I think just spending with the entire team on a, uh, on a yacht, uh, Darling Arbor, the fireworks probably will be the best in the world. Uh, and just that experience uh, and walking back to the hotel, which probably would be a one or two kilometer walk because uh, it, so much of traffic, no taxis available at the time. Uh, so probably that will be the best, you know, spending uh, the New Year Eve with your friends, with someone uh, you have got great bonding, and along with family members uh, on the Darling Arbor, fantastic experience. They never dared to sledge you, right? Uh, I, mean, I mean, this is not the platform to talk about, you know, <laughs> Australia yeah, sledging. You talk about all the good things. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, 
uh, I, as I told just before, I just touched on that. For me, Baji and uh, Zach were the best ledgers. <laughs> you know, and there were so many incidents, uh, probably this is not again the opportunity to share that. Uh, but sledging is part and parcel. No, no, it's of, the great, uh, I mean, of, banter uh, is the reason there's, we enjoy yeah, the game. As long as it doesn't cross the line. Sledging. There's a difference between banter and sledging. Sledging is more about disintegrating yeah. or yeah. distracting the opposition player. And, and Australians were good at that, but I think uh, Indians were not uh, behind. Excellent. And one of the best things about Australia is that you, they have a wonderful time on the field. They know better. But after the match is over, they are as if nothing has happened. But you take the memory. <laughs> uh, you know, before we go to the last segment, we have a quiz uh, which, uh, you know, you guys have organized at Tourism Australia. And uh, lucky winners will get amazing souvenirs. So the only thing is that you have to raise your arm and then answer the question. Are you ready? The first question. Which male and female tennis player holds the record for the most number of Australian Open titles? Just raise your arm. Yes? In men? How many titles for Margaret Court? Amazing. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I bet he's from Dream Sports. And Djokovic? Seventh. Seventh. Round of applause. Your name? Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Are you a journalist, Soumya? Are you a journalist? Okay. Well done. Are you a tennis writer or what? In which Australian stadium oh, can where's you… where's the gift? Are you, where's the gift? Where's the gift? <laughs> I thought… I th I'll There's be some Australian open after. tennis balls there for you, Soumya. No, no. We'll give, we'll we'll give it to you. We'll give it later. Don't worry. Right, Trust okay. us. In which Australian stadium can you watch a live cricket game from the roof, pool and your hotel restaurants? There are two or three stadiums. You can name any one. Yes? It's the Gabba. Right answer. Round of applause. The final fortress has been breached. On which type of surface was the AO played uh, up until the late 80s? Grass. Round of applause. Yes, I said that. You listened to me. Somebody was listening to me. What's your name? Ashutosh. Ashutosh. Round of applause for Ashutosh, please. Which is the largest cricket stadium in Australia and how many fans can it host? Both answers required. I think it's Melbourne. Melbourne how many fans? Uh, 90,000 people. No. no. Bada, bada. 95. 95,000. 1 lakh? Somebody has quickly googled it. <laughs> it's 1 lakh 24 fans. And the most amazing thing about MCG is that it's like an Indian stadium where everything happens. Political rallies, religious festival, concerts. <laughs> MCG is also like this. Aussie rule, football, rugby uh, and you know whatever. Those pitches that they get in and change it every now and then. And concerts as well. I actually seen a concert at the MCG as well. Fantastic stadium. The bowl is just unbelievable. You have to go there. I think there's there. an Argentina-Brazil game that's going to happen at the MCG now. So. Mm. Wow. Wow, that, that's another amazing. great thing about the stadiums is that even if you have friends in other stands, you can actually walk around and meet them. Yeah. There are no restrictions whatsoever. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. That's, that's another beauty. And to fill a stadium of 100,000 capacity, it hardly takes five to ten minutes to enter or exit after, you know, before and after the game. And lunch also, within lunch, you get absolutely no problems getting your food. And the most important reason Melbourne people come and watch the game, there are some 50 bars. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, your seat still remains <laughs> intact. You don't exactly. lose your seat. Or you don't need to hold your bladder. <laughs> okay, we have a special prize which is a Kookaburra bat signed by Michael Clark and courtesy again Tourism Australia. We'll have a bowl and there'll be a lucky draw. You will take out the winner and that person will get this signed bat from Michael Clark. This is uh, extra plus one, hoga to bata dena. So I think I can do only see Dream Set Go cards in it. All right. The winner of the Kookaburra bat signed by Michael Clark is Meena Rawat from Tenova. Oh, round of applause. <laughs> Meena, the bat will come to you. <laughs> She's coming here. 
There is another batch signed by uh, Baji and VBS. So that's also coming your way. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are we giving her the bat now? Yeah, oh, come, 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 come. Michael Clark hated facing Baji. <laughs> Congratulations. Well played. You know, there's a trivia about Michael Clark's bat. Michael Clark's bat handle was always a little loose. So when he used to bat, it is to click. And he said he purposely kept it loose because he liked the idea of having a noise when he's batting. Abhi pucho mat kyu. Wasn't that the neck? Wasn't he given out any time? Yeah, it happened to him once and that's when he changed his bat and actually corrected it because once he was nearly given out because of that sound. Before the DRS came in. Yes. Okay, we are coming to the culminating part. I'll start with Bhaji. Uh, you shared your memories. The T20 World Cup is going to happen. 15 years we haven't uh, won it. You were part of that 2007 uh, team that won the World Cup. That rally or whatever, the procession from uh, the airport to Wankhede Stadium went for three days. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. What do you think are India's chances going into the T20 World Cup? See, I, I don't know what's going to happen, to be honest. Because every time we think that we have a team, but uh, we end up not qualifying. So I don't want to say much. All I can say is, good luck, boys. Just do it this time, please. You know, last time, we were, we were very sure that we'll beat Pakistan and we'll beat New Zealand. It didn't happen. And we lost those two games and uh, we were out of this competition. So I don't want to say, nazar nahi lagani hai maine. I just want to say, Lots of love to you guys. Just go out there and win. Win. Or Umran Malik ko zaroor leke jana. He'll bowl 160 there. <laughs> and in Australia, it'll be fun. Phir bhi Australian wickets abhi paata hi ho gaya hai. Nei, wo uspe bhi paada dega. Kisi ka sar paada dega. <laughs> Jitri te dal raha hai. He's unbelievable. I think uh, VVS, you should also put in some words for him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's bowling the best. Uh, you know, Indian bowler bowling at 155 on 157, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. But you know, as the NCA head, VVS Lakshman, you've got to do one thing. He has now 1.2 billion advisors, Umran Malik. <laughs> half will tell him, boss, to zor se dal. Half will say, boss, pace is not the ultimate. Line and length is important. You have to put four bouncers next to Umran Malik so that no advisor come close by. Uh, AK, you know, I think uh, when you're playing at the highest level, very soon you'll realize that uh, you have to be controlling your actions, you know, because there will be so many advisors, you know, so many ex expectations to fulfill. But uh, players who play at the highest level or successful at the highest level very soon, you know, cordon that off, you know, and they focus on what's uh, supposed to be done on a cricket field. And I'm sure Umran or anyone who plays for the country will learn that very soon. And the sooner they'll learn that and understand that, they'll be successful. So, bouncers ki zarurat nahi hai. Bouncers dalna zaruri hai. Aur articles nahi padna chahiye. <laughs> Nishan, uh, what are the three things uh, the fans should expect in Australia during the T20 World Cup? Off cricket, on cricket. It's what are the three things they should look forward to in Australia? It's a bit Australia? unfair question because just to talk about three things in a continent called Australia, I'll possibly talk about one thing in each state or one thing in the top four or five states. So let's start off with the state of Queensland. I've got my colleague Rana sitting there who represents Queensland. Uh, there's this amazing... Uh, thing or an underwater wonder of the world or the only underwater wonder of the world called the Great Barrier Reef. You can snorkel, you can scuba dive, uh, you can ride an underwater scooter, you can skydive, you can bungee jump in that, in that region, you can have a private island picnic with your family and friends. There's no better experience to witness thousand shades of blue anywhere else in the world. Coming to Sydney, I see a lot of successful people here. but. You aren't really successful unless you've taken the climb of your life by climbing the Sydney bridge climb experience. It's one of the most majestic experience. Do it at sunrise or sunset. It's spectacularly beautiful, you know, and, and that's where you feel that you really achieved something in life. Melbourne, 
Victoria, now Indian license is valid in Australia and you drive on the same side Round as you drive in for India. That. <laughs> so there's nothing better than driving along the Great Ocean Road, the 240 kilometers stretch. You're driving along the seascapes, the landscapes, the quaint little villages, some wonderful cafes there. It's like driving on the edge of the world and you should not miss, miss that particular experience. On Kangaroo Island in South Australia, you should definitely have breakfast with the kangaroos and the koalas in the natural habitat. Because Kangaroo Island is seven to eight times bigger than Singapore, but with a population of just 4,000. So a lot of social distancing happen that happens there on that, <laughs> on that island. In, in WA or Western Australia, there's a place called Rockness Island where you meet the world's happiest animal called the quokka. You know, they've got a natural grin. Roger Federer has taken a selfie with him. Harsha Vogel has taken a selfie with him. And you've got to take one with him as well. So these are some of the experiences. So whether it's the rock or the reef, it's the cities or the outback, it's, uh, you know, romance or honeymoons or, you know, if you're individual, if you're traveling to the family, this is like a wonderful five-star luxurious buffet that offers right from soups and salads to appetizers to entrees to, you know, your main course and amazing desserts. So it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. You have an opportunity to travel during Diwali uh, because the, the ICC T20 World Cup coincides with that. And then you have the Australian Open following up in, in Jan. So if you're getting married around that time, do plan your trip around, or your honeymoon or your anniversary around that time. So Amazing. that's what I appreciate. So you put and, boundaries also. And we are throwing the biggest Diwali bash in Australia this year. So anybody who's concerned about Diwali and India-Pakistan, this is a party with legends that you must not forget. <laughs> And if you are too fatigued by going to so many places and you feel that you need to chill, go to Barosa Valley, have five glasses of wine and visualize everything what he has <laughs> That's an amazing. Barosa Valley is just out of the world. Uh, well, final thoughts, uh, Monish, uh, before we get to the final concluding thoughts uh, of VVS and Bhaji, uh, what makes your dream set go package different from the rest? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, again, I'll, I'll kind of repeat myself that... Uh, you know, so far in India, when it was about traveling for a sporting event, it was about getting the ticket and then booking some travel package around it and going and experiencing. Uh, where we're different from competition is because we want to make it a 360-degree holistic experience and we want to ensure that it goes above and beyond just a ticket and accommodation, right? It's an experience that we want to create, whether it's to do with the destination or whether it's got to do with the sports, we want to kind of package all of that together. Whether it's a corporate client or whether it's a high net worth individual, we want to curate a wide variety of different experiences that every sports fan can enjoy. So Superb. You know, before we go on to the media Q&A, there's one final question. India versus Pakistan game in Melbourne. If First, I'll start with Nishan. What is your take as the country manager? Let's see how diplomatic can 23rd be. 23rd of October, Danteras, <laughs> India, Pakistan. The winner will be Australia. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you have tourists from India, Pakistan, 100,000 people, 100,000, 24 people at the MCG cheering for the game. Tourism Australia will make a lot of money. <laughs> Good. Round of applause. Thank you so much for coming here, joining here and giving your perspective. Uh, Monish, your final thoughts before I go to their Pakistan experience. I mean, uh, for me, I was probably 12 years old uh, when I saw Venkatesh Prasad bowl that ball uh, that got Amir Sohel bowl, right? And that probably for me is, is one moment in cricket uh, that I'll never forget. So I'm hoping that this India-Pakistan uh, gives us one more moment that inspires uh, my son or my daughter and the, the upcoming generation uh, with those moments that will inspire them to watch cricket for the next 20, 30, 50 years of their life. So. Amazing. <laughs> VVS, any Pakistan experience and what India-Pakistan match means? Uh, well, as a cricketer, we want to take it as any other match, you know, because you don't want to get emotionally attached to the result. You know, obviously, there's so much of expectation from the countrymen of uh, both the countries. You know, uh, they will be having a lot of... Uh, expectations, but the team which handles that pressure, the team which is emotionally detached from the result will do well. Uh, personally for me, uh, beating Pakistan in 2004 in their backyard has been the highlight of my career. And I was able to contribute in that final decider uh, ODI in Lahore, uh, in Lahore, where I got 100 and we beat them uh, uh, in the one day series and then we went on to beat uh, them in the test series. So that was probably uh, the highlight uh, of my career playing against Pakistan. Superb. Bajiba, if you want to get a ticket for Shoaib Akhtar, 
इस बार तो आपको पता है मोनिश का नंबर दे दो बिल्कुल बिल्कुल वैसे ही शेयर कर दूंगा बिजनेस तो हमें वहां से भी चाहिए ना exactly but aapka pakistan experience uh, so many games you played against them your best experience and what do you see about the india pak game in melbourne uh, see as vivia said uh, we don't have to get attached to the result but automatically somehow your mind gets to you know that uh, end result only aur wo waiter se leke sab log wo remind karenge bilkul as a cricketer i can share a story 2011 World Cup semi-final match. Uh, I couldn't sleep before the game. There was so much of pressure that what if we lose? What if we lose? What will happen? You know. So I had to actually ask, you know, security guys to be around my house. You know, a lot of things happens in our country. If we lose, you know, same fan becomes your. आपको पता ही है. तो वो मुझे उस मैच से पहले I I couldn't sleep because I was like so worried. क्या होगा यार result क्या होगा? और वो जब मैं जीत गए उसके बाद भी नहीं मुझे नींद आई क्योंकि इतना एक्साइटेड हो गया मैं आई गोज सो एक्साइटेड आई वॉज लाइक वेरिंग द फाइनल यार आई वॉज लाइक ए मच प्रेशर्ड गेम आई हैव एवर बीन पार्ट ऑफ बहुत मैच खेले हैं यहाँ वहाँ बट वो मैच में जो हुआ मे मे भी लाइफ में शायद पहली बार ऐसे हुआ होगा आई एम नॉट कि बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ा के बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ पहली बार ऐसा हुआ होगा कि मेरी टाँगें थोड़ी सी काँप रही थी जब मैं सेकेंड स्पेल बॉलिंग करने आया लकीली है मुझे फर्स्ट बॉल पर विकेट मिला उमरान अकमल का फिर देन अफरीदी का वहाँ से गेम जो है वो हमारी तरफ चेंज हो गया आई वाज सो ग्लैड एंड आई आई सो रिलीफ्ड एंड आई थॉट दैट वी प्लेड द फाइनल इन मोहाली अगेंस्ट पाकिस्तान देन प्लेइंग हेयर इन वन खेड़े अगेंस्ट श्रीलंका आई थिंक फॉर मी दैट वाज द फाइनल गेम वॉट एन अमेजिंग मैच दैट वॉज राउंड फॉर दिस वंडरफुल जेंटलमैन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर शेयरिंग योर थाट्स लेडीज जेंटलमैन वी हैव It's little time for some questions don't worry there will be good opportunity what i'd like to request is just uh, uh, have the mics coming on to the media personnel and guests please uh, say where you're from who you're addressing the question to and shoot aisa press conference kabhi nahi dekha hai maine i had a question as a us citizen if i were to buy, wanted to buy a ticket or something can i have a take it in us dollars or do i need to buy it in rupees or how do i go about doing that so we can basically sell the t20 world cup packages to any individual around the world right so we can bill you in us dollars <laughs> and you could still have the same experience can i buy in rubles <laughs> bitcoins <laughs> <laughs> anyone this side yeah I have a question for Harbhajan sir and VVS sir. Uh, will you guys be using Dreamset Go to go watch matches anywhere? I'll probably use uh, to go to Wimbledon. जब इनका वहाँ भी बन जाएगा. We already are. हाँ तो then I will be going there for sure. <laughs> I'll be contacting you for that. I want to take my wife and my kids there to experience that. अभी मैं तो जरूर कांटेक्ट करूँगा. I think it's similar for me also. You know because I was sharing with them one tournament. and apart from watching the cricket tournaments which i never ever miss right from my younger days was wimbledon you know every summer i used to just wait uh, for the wimbledon to start you know watching boris becker watching pete sampras steffi graf before that chris evert uh, even lendl i mean some of those uh, uh, movements were probably the most cherished movements i had the experience of watching that uh, uh, in in person in 2002 so hopefully that's what uh, i will look forward uh, to contact uh, dream set go apart from uh, the other uh, sporting experiences because as a sports person that's what i shared earlier i never expected that uh, i will behave in that fashion because as a cricketer who has played for a long period of time you're always involved with the game you're always trying to win matches for your country but once you retire i mean these are the small pleasures as a sport as a former sports person you can experience you know watching manchester united in 2002 and then uh, in 2009 at manchester was probably the unbelievable and uh, i'm sure baji also will know we were uh, in 2002 we went to watch after beating england at edingley uh, and uh, uh, i think seven or eight of us went and sat in one of our friends box and there was no sound and there was no atmosphere at all no energy and in the half time we asked the host that uh, we heard so much about uh, watching uh, or you know the kind of bus which will be there uh, when man you uh, play plays at home and it all oh really you want to listen 
and I didn't realize that that was a soundproof box. <laughs> then he just switched on the, uh, the loudspeaker and then we heard the entire nows, you know, noise there and it was deafening, you know, between uh, both the sides, you know, the, the atmosphere was almost similar to when we play at MCG, full, full house or at Eden Gardens, probably more deafening because it's a smaller uh, and a compact uh, stadium. So I think those kind of experiences I look forward to uh, enjoy uh, through uh, Dream Set Go. You know, there's one thing that VVS doesn't have, I have, is that Wimbledon 2017, I got a picture with Roger Federer in the players' lounge after he beat Dimitrov and we discussed the match. Unbelievable. You have to replicate that. Very lucky, for sure. Very lucky. Uh, this is a year where you cannot separate uh, the legendary Shane Bourne with Australia. And this is a most memorable year that I think it's very difficult to even call him as late. I would want to ask uh, VVS and Baji, one of your memorable events with this legend, if you could share. Uh, I think it's very, uh, very unfortunate and it came as a, a rude shock, you know, when I got to know uh, that a good friend, a very dear friend, probably one of the best spinners or best cricketer a world cricket has seen, you know, suddenly uh, just overnight because I saw his him tweeting about the demise of Rod Marsh, who was his mentor, and suddenly we we got to know about this, uh, uh, you know, shocking uh, news. Uh, see, Shane was a magician. Uh, for me, Mulli Daran was probably the best spinner I played against, but Shane for me was just a personality. You know, he was a magician uh, who can uh, bamboozle the best of batsmen. You know, using the uh, not only his skill, his talent as a bowler, but also the mental games he plays, the mind games he plays, you know, to uh, distract the batsman, to put pressure on the batsman. So probably Shane was a very special talent and it's so unfortunate that uh, he will not be part of the World Cup, uh, T20 World Cup because, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that something in his memory, I'm sure that uh, Cricket Australia and ICC will do. We saw the kind of uh, event they, uh, in, in, in his uh, memory which was held at MCG and it truly deserved that because he was a true champion. I'm a little getting emotional because he was someone who was very close to all of us and he was a true role model and suddenly he's gone. So I just hope that uh, uh, his legacy will be forever remembered. There's no doubt about that. See, about Shadebone, all I can say that I, as a young kid, I used to have his poster, Steve Waugh's poster in my room, and uh, when he's no more with us, you know, it's like our very dear friend is gone. He was very, very grateful to me. You know, whenever I met him, I had whatever small little chats with him. He was always very kind to me, you know, telling me about what to do to become even more successful. So, of course, we're going to miss him. And, and as Vivius said, you know, he was a magician with the ball, a king of spin. You know, someone, um, you know, I would actually pay from my pocket to go and see him bowl. You know, outstanding moments. You know, I remember one of the game in Adelaide when Rahul got uh, runs there. You know, while Vani was bowling, only one noise was uh, there in the whole ground. It was like, Vani, Vani. I'm going to miss that noise whenever I'll get the chance to see that game. I mean, any game. Now in Australia, Vonnie is not playing, Vonnie is not there, but Vonnie is here. We love you, Vonnie. Uh, my question is for Monish. Y your name? My name is Oscar, and my con question is for Monish. Uh, in terms of Australian Open, what are the experiences we're going to, uh, you know, see? So, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, again, um, like I said, this is... Uh, out of all the Grand Slams which are there, uh, Australian Open is providing some of the most uh, uh, amazing experiences. So, you, like I said, you can uh, actually sit on the court and uh, get the best seats to watch the game. Uh, you can have clinics that, uh, that you can come in before uh, uh, the actual game takes place uh, and practice and use the actual facilities with the best coaches. Uh, for a group of 2 to 12 and get a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, you could actually do a fan walk where you walk through the entire center court, you stop by, watch the uh, the legends actually warm up before the game, get a photo opportunity, 
and these are experiences that that are actually unmatched, right? And then there's of course a lot more. You get like a, a wine tasting session at one of their most premium hospitality boxes before the match, etc. So, time for one more question. Yeah. So my question is for both Monish and Nishant. Uh, we all know there are COVID restrictions still in place. How do you ensure that won't ex interfere with the experiences that the travelers have? So as we speak, there are absolutely no restrictions when it comes to travel to Australia. All you need to do is have a valid visa. You don't need an RT-PCR test. You don't need a RAT test before you depart from India. Uh, all you need is a flight ticket and a visa. And, and a digital passenger declaration, which is similar to the Air Suvida, uh, you know, portal that we have, that India has. So Australia has got this digital passenger declaration. And on arrival, all you have to do is a self-monitored rapid antigen test. That's about it. And you don't have to declare it or show it to anybody else unless you test positive, which hopefully you would. Yeah, thanks to all these rules by Australia, it just makes selling a lot easier, right? <laughs> so. Sorry, uh, this is more uh, coming from a personal angle. Um, you know, we always, sorry, my name is Ashwarya. And uh, we've always, you know, understood our emotions as fellow fandom of meeting legends like you. But I also wanted to understand from like, Paji, you and VVS saw, like, how does it feel when you guys get to interact with fans like us? What is that emotion? What is, you know, your feeling when you're meeting your fans? And like through dream set goes uh, legend interaction, sorry. Like you're gonna be like coming a lot closer and sorry I'm a little nervous right now asking this question, but how does it feel? Uh, I think it's a fabulous feeling, you know, because uh, as uh, cricketers, uh, especially uh, playing the game in India, we feel that we're blessed to have such wonderful fans. And I always tell, and I've always maintained this, the relationship between a cricketer and the fans is divine relationship. Because we don't know each other, uh, but you all pray for our success, you all pray for our well-being, you know, and we as cricketers, you know, all the cricketers, I talk on behalf of the cricketing fraternity, that we appreciate that, you know, and we feel that uh, we are very lucky uh, to have that kind of uh, fans who always uh, want us to succeed, who always want us to go out and play to our potential and bring laurels to the country. So we've, we are very, very grateful for that kind of affection and warmth and love we get from our fans. That brings us to the end of the evening. One more question. Okay, quick question. Just yes. One, just one question. This is yeah. from Munish. First of all, a big thanks. As a, as a cricket fan, you've kind of given me my moment to meet two of my legends. Uh, Mr. Lakshman would know from interactions which I've had uh, because of my uh, career which I have with Marriott, which gives me uh, interaction with, with a dream hero of mine, Mr. Lakshman. And Mr. Harbhajan Singh, 11th to the 15th March 2001 is my epic moment which happened in Calcutta. I was seated in the same place for the time when the match was happening in Eden Gardens. But I was sitting in the same place so that India goes well. We were losing badly. We were minus 274. We became plus 370. That stuff of legend which, which Mr. Singh started. Ponting was his bunny. And, and I can talk about that match every ball. What I want to actually talk to you, Monish, about is we, as an I as a fan celebrated 20 years of this match last year. It was COVID, Whoa. we couldn't do much, but, but to 2021, March 11 to 15th, I celebrated on my own because that was, according to me, the, the moment where Indian cricket became aggressive. As in, and sorry, but, but maybe the fan in me is just wanting to speak a lot. But would we, as fans, able to also experience anniversaries or anecdotes or moments like these, which are historic in nature, with, with fans later, with, with cricket legends or sports legends later, as in, for me, this is, this is that celebration. So, so, first of all, thanks for that once again. But, but if we can look forward for this, it'll be brilliant. Uh, thank you, and uh, I think you just make my answer a lot easier, right? It's all about dream experiences, right? So, the fact that I'm sitting here between both of them, uh, I know I have to pinch myself because it's a great experience for me. Uh, and, it, and that's exactly what we want to do for all our clients, right? Uh, it's about, you know, whether it's a corporate event, whether it's a meet and greet, whether it's a fireside chat, whether it's... So we've got, like, for example, uh, we've signed on Michael Clark, Brett Lee, uh, Mike Hussey, and now fans will get to basically have an experience at the Waka with Mike Hussey, right? But again, it's about celebrating special moments outside of tournaments as well, right? And, and that's where we want to bring fans closer to 
legends who can give you the actual stories, right? I got the opportunity to have lunch with uh, VVS sir the other day. And, you know, we discussed about uh, a lot of stories, which as a fan, I was just super excited to listen to. And, you know, again, like the innings that he played at Calcutta, if, if I can get another 20 minutes with him where I can understand what his thought process was, is something that will stay with me forever, right? And that's what we want to give and deliver to fans. It'll take you 281 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Harbhajan Singh and VVS Lakshman. I would like to request you to please stay for the photographs. I'd like to request uh, friends from the media that uh, you can uh, take the photographs and on your way out at the reception, you can collect your media boxes. Drinks and dinner is open as well. Round of applause for all of you for coming for this uh, wonderful evening. Thank you so much.